and raising the thoracic cavity in inspiration as well. Uh, remember, we have the diaphragm uh, at the base of the ribs for inspiration. And then on the back, with the vertebral column, you're going to have all kinds of axial type muscles that run the length of the ver vertebral bodies. And I, they have all kinds of names. If you lump most of them together, they're called the erector spiny. They have various attachments between spinous processes, transverse processes, but they run up and down the, the spine. They're called collectively the erector spiny. They actually have individual names, but the erector spiny obviously are going to extend the spine, make the spine more erect. So it's going to pull, pull you backwards and upwards. There's going to be muscles that are going to attach uh, between the spine and the back of the skull, the occipital bone. And indeed, these are nuchal ridges. If you feel the back of your head, you'll feel little bumps and ridges. And su such muscles as semispinalis capitis and splenius capitis will go up, and that will help extend the head. So, so those are some of the uh, big axial muscles, if you will. I might mention a couple of others by name. The quadratus lumborum goes from the iliac crest to the lower lumbar in like a triangular way. And that's a major lateral mover and one of the most underrated, under-discussed core muscles of the abdomen. Another muscle is the multifidus because it has multiple fingers. It's really part of the erector spiny. But the multifidus goes from transverse process of one uh, vertebrae to the next or the next up. And it just leapfrogs the whole way up. The multifidus is the only segmentally innervated back muscle. The only segmentally innervated back muscle. So if you lose spinal nerve L4, you're going to lose the multifidus at L4 and there's nothing else to take its place. So the multifidus is a very important core muscle to strengthen the lower lumbar back to prevent ruptured discs and in the recovery of degenerative disc disease. So multifidus, a favorite of mine, but it goes all the way up, but very, very thick and important in the lower spine. Now let's talk about the girdles. Um, um, I've got to attach... I've got to attach this scapula by muscle to the axial. So I've got some axial to girdle muscles, and in this case, axial to scapula. And there's three that I can see offhand. Right here at the angle, the levator, uh, the levator scapulae goes from the transverse processes and uh, processes of the cervical spine down to here, and it helps elevate the scapula. If anybody ever gets knots in their shoulders from fatigue, that's usually the levator scapula, and you need a good massage. Two others, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. They bring back or retract the scapula like you're standing at a tension. So they will pull in and squeeze the scapula back. So those are three of the most important ones. There's some on the front side. The pectoralis minor will come from several ribs right here in the upper region and attach to the coracoid process, and that will actually pull forward and down the scapula. So I can attach the pectoralis minor to the girdle as well. Uh, now you might say, well, why is that important? I'll tell you why it's important, because I can have no distal mobility. I can't move anything distally.